Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we got another box in from GearBest. Whenever I come home and I see a box from GearBest, that's a good day. So we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing here. So this is a pretty good sized box. So um, let's see how big it is. So this guy happens to weigh in by uh, at about 2 feet or about roughly 62 centimeters by about 20 inches or about 51 centimeters and this guy is uh, about 10 inches or 25 centimeters tall so it's a good size box and that's a good thing because there's a good size printer in this so let's throw the sign off to the side take our little handy dandy knife let's open this, this box up uh, your atypical Chinese cardboard box if you will lighter grade cardboard but it seems to be okay There we go. We have white foam, box of white foam. Well, there's probably a little bit more than that in here, so let's hope. So let's go ahead, open this up, and okay, this is a little tough. There we go. And voila, we've got the Elfwise. Look at this, folks. It even comes with a sticky sheet of Biltac clone adhesive on top of a glass plate. Big thumbs up there. Uh, looks pretty cool. Now this guy, I'm not going to call it a Creality CR10 killer, but I'm going to call it a, a definitely a competitor, a CR10 competitor if you will. Uh, so this piece, I'm just trying to look how this is all kind of set in here. And see how to get this out. Oh, looks like there's another box of stuff down here. I'm gonna, whoops. I was going to try taking that piece out, but that's not going to go well. So I'm going to remove this piece. It doesn't This piece doesn't seem to be attached, but now it might be easier to get this piece out. I just want to take this box. This is, this is your extra parts box, of course. Now, this comes relatively assembled like the... Uh, CR10. Now this is interesting, um, and I'll get out of the box, but this is all metal. This looks like plastic in the uh, uh, on the website. So this this is metal. And let's go ahead and see if we can pop this out of here. And ooh, this is pretty, 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 pretty. I like this. Um, that's pretty nice. Oh, this is a control box. Nice control box. I believe it's got a touch screen from what I've read. Um, I really like this. This is this is kind of nice. So let's let's take a little bit of a look to see what we have in the box here, if you will. And uh, ooh, another pair of these obligatory side cutters. Good buddy, zillion of those now. Really heavy power cord. It's kind of stiff, but really heavy power cord. Uh, we have the spool holder, which is rather interesting design. Um, the way it looks, it sits in here and the spool sets on that. Not sure how long that'll last. Oh, we got the kind of like the uh, CR10, but this is metal and here's the end stop. So that's all pretty cool. We got some neat yellow filament small roll of that. That's kind of nice. That'll go on the nice on the zone star with the smaller. But uh, got some zip strips to clean things up. We got, I don't know what this is, some kind of spring, something or another. Um, we've got the, we've got a micro SD card, a micro SD card reader. Uh, looks like it says 16 gig. Hopefully the instructions are on there. We got the obligatory USB cable, 8,000 of those. We got a little wrench pack in everything. And then we have spatula, 8,000 of those. Then we got, ooh, these are nicer. Um, they got the ball ends and they're the longer ones, Allen wrenches. I like those. Okay, now, as I understand it, this has a 300 by 300 by 400 build area, uh, very much like the uh, CR10. Um, looks a lot like the CR10. Uh, I'm going to go ahead for the time being and remove this. Because this looks like it just clamps down. Now it's mine the high temperature, so it's got the borosilicate glass 
it's got a little chip out of the corner here, but it's got this stuck on with the 3M tape, so this is actually stuck on here. I'm really liking this printer. So it's got, it uh, doesn't have a cable chain for the bed. I think that's a modification I'll probably make. Now, very much like the CR10s, notice how it has the bolt holes down here uh, for the gantry assembly. And uh, this, this looks to be more of a, not really a kit, but more of a simple assembly, if you will. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got here. And so we have the, the bolts package. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Maybe see about putting this together. So uh, we have one of the upright mounts with what looks like the ZN stop. Uh, also, like I say, these these are metal, so that that's pretty good. So I'm going to set these off to the side. So here, these appear to be the uprights, while these appear to be for the uh, the T mounts. Now it appears that these have already this has already been assembled because you can see I don't know if you can see here on the uh, it's it's already has like a screw's been in it and removed. So we're going to set these aside for a second. Now there doesn't seem to be any T-nuts, and I have not looked at the instructions yet, so um, I'm just kind of winging this a little bit. But it uh, should be pretty simple and straightforward, and that's what I want to see. How simple and straightforward is this to build? So we've now got the gantry. Okay, so we've gotten these tightened down. Now, one of the tricks I share with you, get all four bolts in, you know, started before you start tightening it down because if you try to put one bolt in and tighten it, the uh, tolerances here aren't the best because of the maker rail and you'll have a problem. So as you kind of saw me doing the time lapse, you know, put them in, get them all, you know, started, and then tighten them up kind of, you know, going back and forth a little bit uniformly. So let's now go ahead and... Uh, I'm assuming now this is. Uh, I'm going to assume that this is going to go on the far side um, of the unit. So I'm going to place this one here. And again, I'm kind of doing this without checking the instructions. I just want to see how easy this is to inst uh, to assemble. So far, it's looking pretty good. So um, it's very straightforward. Okay, so we got that other side on. We're going to do the same for this side. As you can see, it looks like it comes down and hits on this back piece right here. So you want to make sure that this gets lined up, but it should be pretty tight in general. I'm just kind of looking at it here, and it looks like this kind of hits on this motor assembly. Okay, I actually had, had to take go offline and peek at this. This actually goes this way. So, uh, rather interesting, and it hits against the bottom of this piece rather than the bottom of that piece. I don't know, it seemed kind of intuitive it'd go this way, but it hits against the motor. I did check, and it goes this way, folks. So let's go ahead and assemble this. I'm interested to see how this lines up. Um, because on the Zone Star, I had a little bit of problem getting this lined up because there's not much in here that makes contact. You can see, again, this the scraping of the powder coating here. So this was completely assembled, so they, they must assemble and test these before shipping and then just break them down and, and ship them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these screws in. Okay, so we finished the mechanical assembly here, so I'm going to start plugging things in. So I'm going to go around back. I'm not quite sure how the audio is going to be. But now this does not appear to be marked, or at least in anything I can read it. 
trying to read this here. So I'm going to have to go check on the instructions which are which for this. Um, I want to see here how these are labeled. So, so let's see. So we do have, let's see, Y motor, looks like Y end stop, and then uh, Z motor, MT, and end stop. So I think this will plug in. So if I do the Z motor, now that was a little bit that was a little bit difficult to get that one in, but it, it's in there. I'll have to clean up these wires a little bit uh, too. And then we have the X motor, which is going to run up the gantry. And then we have the extruder motor. Now this is all seems to be really loose on here, so that's, uh, I'll check that in a minute. And it does seem to have a filament out sensor. Okay, this doesn't seem to tighten up too much. I may have to take a bigger look at this. Looks like this this um, this particular bolt might not be quite long enough. No, that seems to be a problem right there. I'm gonna have to come back to that. This is gonna be a little bit of a stretch. This is kind of funky. This looks like it might interfere with the could a little bit interfere with the uh, X motor. Okay, so now simply I'm gonna have to go look at the instructions to see where these two go because they're not labeled on the back here and it might be labeled in Chinese. Okay, so I went and took a look and actually the instructions uh, don't say either. However, I did get looking and they are quite a bit different so it's kind of clear which one goes to which. I should have probably looked at that a little bit before but it didn't catch my attention and it's also you know kind of uh, as it has here was a little bit confusing. So anyways, it's kind of clear you just plug in the ones that fit. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Now one of the things that's clear to me already, so the bed connection here is probably less than optimal because uh, you kind of see how this kind of moves and this has got real sh relatively, I'm going to say relatively short cable uh, here. And again I've got to clean up some of these uh, cables. That's That part's also kind of clear to get these out of the way. Also, for the hot end, in the, the uh, hot end here is kind of a little bit. So, I, I think one of the things with this, you'll have to plan on doing a little bit of cable management. Um, so, I've got to go back. Uh, this switch appears to be a little bit loose. I've got a problem with this screw, so this is definitely going to be somewhat of a problem. I'm going to have to see if I can find a longer one. It looks like the, it, it just goes in a couple of threads, and then it, it kind of. Uh, is stripped off. But before I do that, I just want to see, power this on and get a get a little bit of perspective. So what we're going to do, we're going to we're going to connect the power. Now make sure you set it for your correct voltage. In my case, it's 110. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click this. And we have Elfware, and we've got the screen come up. With stepper motors are energized, so that's good. Kind of walk around the front. And so movement, let's go, I want to go up to Z. For some reason Z was binding up. I think I'm going to have to loosen this assembly and kind of let it retighten it. Um, yeah, one of the things that it's kind of, the, um, the Z screws pulled a little bit on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this brass anti-backlash nut a little bit. Okay, this is more acceptable. So I've loosened these and I'll re-tighten them up. The, um, the Z uh, lead screw was binding a little bit. So just had to let it readjust itself by uh, loosening up the um, nuts on the brass anti-backlash. Allowed it to shift over a little bit and kind of align itself. Uh, so it wasn't binding, so that's now all working well. 
And uh, one of the other things, it seems that we have a home for Z and then we have a XY home. So we have two separate homes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to home the Z. Okay, so that happens. Now I'm going to home XY. And there we have a little bit of a problem. So, and the problem is, I don't have a Z, the Z, or sorry, the X axis switches broke right off of the board. Um, so there's no switch there. So I didn't notice that before, but yeah, that's a problem. So anyways, we're probably going to have to fix that. So I've got some other switches. I don't know if I've got that size, but I'll have to see. So again, this assembly bumps up here. I don't think I saw it in the box anywhere. So uh, I don't know, maybe if it broke off before packing. So that's a bummer. So this is kind of one of the things you kind of want to run it through some basic tests. So. Um, this is why I'm not going to quite call it a Creality killer. Um, I think it's definitely, you know, a Creality competitor because, again, it's pretty much the same configuration as the CR-10. So I'm going to have to go off and, and fix a few things. So, uh, for example, the switch, the extruder. So if you get this, probably expect you're going to have to, to maybe uh, fix a couple things. Now, the switch here, quite frankly, I've had this happen before in printers that I've gotten shipped to me from China where the, you know, switch or the smaller components may be broken uh, because, again, this was pressed up against here. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of uh, par for the course. So you need to be prepared for this. When you get something like this, one of the things, too, um, you know, I want to talk about this a quick second. Uh, I think the 3D printing professor did, did a bit of a, uh, a piece on this, which I thought was really good. You know, when you buy something like this, whether it's from GearBest, uh, AliExpress, etc., you have to expect there's going to be some bumps in the road, for example, like this and this. It's just the way it works when you get in something from China, and that's why, you know, this is like sub 300 bucks. I mean, because it's kind of crazy to get all this for basically 300 bucks. You know, back in the day, this would be a couple thousand bucks to get something like this. So, anyways, uh, just a few bumps in the road. We'll fix it up. So anyways, I'm going to end the, this video. Uh, assembly, I think, as you saw, was really straightforward, was really great. Um, you know, a little bit of confusion on the instructions. would have been nice to have something more in English here that kind of points this out because this was a little bit confusing, even though these are different because they have the two indicating how it's supposed to go. was a little bit confusing, but no big problem. Bolted together nice. Um, Positioning on the Z end stop was a little confusing, nothing major. But all in all, I think pretty good. So I'm going to go, I'm going to fix these up. I'll come back and do a bit of a review video after I fix these up. So, and then we'll take a look at how this prints. So I hope you found it interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I'll have a link for this down below if you're interested in getting one of these. I think it's an interesting value for the money. I think it's a competitor to the CR10. I like to touch screen. Um, I'm really not sure what versions of everything run when I come back and I sort of do the deeper review on it. This is just unboxing and basic assembly. Uh, we'll talk more about it and we'll see how this guy prints. So give it a big thumbs up. Let's see you guys in the next video. Don't forget the swag shop and we'll talk to you all later. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.